Um, so Tui, um, thank you for joining us. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about your product and who you target? And then we'll dive straight into the, the role play. Yep, super excited to be here. I just joined um, Cognizant as a customer actually. Um, Great news. <laughs> David loves <laughs> that. <laughs> He's amped already. already. <laughs> <Way better than laughs> <the last guy. laughs> and um, so my company, we sell uh, advertising technology and uh, uh, specifically for publishers, which are websites that sell uh, digital advertising. And um, so my, my product is very niche. And um, my goals with cold calling is not really to book a meeting, but more for them to tell me how are they doing their ad operations so that I have an understanding of how we can actually help them if our product is for them or not, because the product is very niche. Um, and the problem, the biggest problem that I have with uh, cold calling is that, uh, well, I'm 25. I have only been working for two years. Um, I haven't got a lot of practice. And, you know, with my generation, we have anxiety whenever there's a phone call coming, let alone, you know, making a phone call. So um, I have two questions. The first thing is that um, how do I... Uh, make an introduction of a cold call so that I don't sound like this annoying salesperson who just wants to sell because my, my goal is to understand how they are doing their business. And then the second thing is that how do I make it very casual instead of uh, sounding a little bit investigative? Does that make sense? For sure. It does. It does. I, I feel like we would be able to answer these questions even better if you just try to mock and have David be the prospect here. And then we'd probably be able to pinpoint certain things because it might be like inflections or things of that nature that might be incorporated here as well. Right, perfect. Awesome, Tui, just before we, we do it, um, just tell me out a little bit more. So within um, these publishing houses, like who's the, um, what's the job types of the person you, you tend to be um, calling? Um, so it varies from uh, head of ad operations to ad tech uh, director. Uh, to CROs. Okay, great. And and what is the most what what are you hoping they say in terms of um, like how they're running their ad operations? Um, that I think for me it's uh, it's the most beneficial for me if they just tell me what kind of tool they have in their tech stack. Okay, cool. And what what's the what's like a common tool in, in as part of the tech stack that would help you? Because I really don't know much about about your area, so. Um, so I would say uh, uh, Google, Google uh, Ad Manager is one very big player. Google is basically like the monopoly in this market. Right. Um, and then there's also uh, Pubmatic. So Pubmatic is one big player as well. Pubmatic. Okay, yeah. awesome. Okay, great. Why don't you give me a ring and let's get the show on the road. All right. Ring, ring. Hello, day speaking. Hi, David. Um, okay, I have another brain fart. Can we please do it again? Of course, of course. Let's rerun it. Uh, brain fart, okay. Ring, ring. Hello, Dave speaking. Hi, David. This is Tui from Relevant Digital. Uh, I have a few questions about the ad operations at Daily Mail. Uh, do you have a minute? Um, yeah, I've got a minute. Uh, right, thank you so much. Um, I just have one question regarding the uh, revenue reporting as well as uh, pre-bid management that you are running at Daily Mail. I noticed that you have uh, quite many SSPs connected to your website. Um, I heard from a lot of people in the industry that having more than 15 SSP could be troublesome to report revenue. How is it for you guys over there? Um, yeah, I think we'd like to have, um, a, or we're running a lot of them um, right now, as you say, but um, it's working pretty well. Okay, uh, do you mind me asking um, what tool are you using for uh, reporting revenue at the moment? Um, so for reporting revenue, um, I'm hoping that Pubmatic is the right answer to this. Yeah, could be. Okay. Um, right. Um, so one thing I would like to point out with Pubmatic is that um, they might charge you extra fee when it comes to adding new SSPs uh, to your setup. So let's say if now you have 11 or 15, but then let's say you decide to add five more, 
you will have to pay extra per each SSP that you add. Um, in this case, we really want the best to, for our publishers, so we will not have those additional costs. Uh, does it sound interesting to you? Yeah, sounds, um, sounds like it might be quite difficult to integrate, though. Hmm. Okay, can, can you please tell me more why is it difficult for you? Um, I, just with a company like ours, um, all of in, uh, adding any new technology is quite a, a slow and difficult process. We're quite antiquated in the way we, we, we work uh, from a technology standpoint. So, um, you know, adding new technologies is, is difficult in that sense. Okay, I see. Um, would it make it easier for you uh, if we take care of 90% of the onboarding so let's say that um, with this whole adding new technology thing, we will do 90% of the heavy lifting work. And all you need to do is just tell me what you want and we will do our best to deliver that. Yeah, I mean, that sounds, sounds reasonable. Would you, like, um, would you like to maybe learn more about the product and then we may, maybe we can discuss the compatibility between the two and um, bring this further? Sure, sure that would work. Right, uh, what about next week Thursday at 10 a.m.? How does that work for you? Uh, next week Thursday, 10 a.m. Well, as well, just, just before, um, what, what kind of, um, you mentioned that it's, it's cheaper to go with you instead of um, adding new SSPs. Like, um, what kind of price are we talking with your technology? Um, so, Let's say if now with 15 uh, SSPs that you are having, we charge usually uh, the price of 1,500 per month and there's no additional cost if you add more SSPs. Okay, understood. Sounds, uh, sounds pricey. Pricey comparing to Popmatic? I don't believe that. <laughs> okay, good, cool. Um, all right, so Thursday, Thursday 10 o'clock. Yep, sounds good. Awesome. Sounds really good. Right. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thanks, Tui. Really appreciate it. Whew. <laughs> Scary, right? <laughs> hey, you, made, you, made it, you made it through. You made it through. So well done. <laughs> Ooh. All right, uh, David, if you want to go first, you can. I got a couple things I wrote down. I was just going to say really quickly, Tui, um, I think there's about a thousand people on this call. Um, so first thing to say, you, you mentioned right at the start, you're 25 and there's, there's nerves around cold calling. I'm telling you now, you did not come across as nervous at all. And that was in front of a thousand people um, right here, right now. So, um, you know, please take a lot of confidence away immediately, um, like uh, from this in terms of, you know, when you're on the phones, um, moving forward if you can do it here you can do it um anywhere um so really really great job thank you so much anything you want to add else you um why don't you jump in first and then i get yeah so i mean my sentiment is the same this was a a great call you did a great job someone mentioned the chat a lot of you know i wrote it down a lot of open-ended and leading questions i think that was fantastic i only have like Two, two things to consider. So the intro. I So you asked a lot of great questions in the middle of the call. I feel like one of the things you could do is lead with a great question. So you were saying, hey, I, might, I have a couple questions for you. And the beginning of the call, that can lead, that can lead people to be slightly anxious because then they're like, I'm getting called out the blue and now someone's going to ask me a lot of questions. I don't know about this, right? It's just subconsciously, that's where they go, which you don't want that, right? So- you could, the question that you, the value prop and the question you had after you said, I have a couple questions, you could actually bring that up to the beginning of the call because you asked a good question and you had a good value prop there. So that's yeah. what I would, that would be my recommendation there as well. And then David hinted at this. When anyone mentions a competitor, you could go this route if you're like really trying to get out of it. I would stay away from mentioning that we're cheaper, cost effective. I would try to stay away from those as much as possible. Because mm -hmm. what ends up happening is that you set up the sales cycle to then be a discount sales cycle from the beginning. Because now, because you mentioned that they're going to be like, how can I get more money out of this person cheaper? Uh -huh. Which is what you, you don't want. We don't want, I don't know about y'all. We don't want a discounted <laughs> deal, right? We won't be able to pay full price. So by mentioning, hey, we're cost effective, there's going to be extra fees. 
you can mention those when they are needed and like you feel the pressure, but don't bring them up too early because now you're in a pricing conversation, not in a value conversation. And that's just something to be mindful of. But I think the call as a whole was great, great flow. Didn't feel the nervousness. There was confidence there and job well done. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, I just I just add to it, like um, the way you handled some of my objections was was fantastic. Um, you were so composed. Um, I think I think you um, addressed them head on, but you did it in an empathetic way. You weren't you know you know it wasn't like an argumentative um, uh, yeah an argumentative way of um, presenting the y- yourself. It was it was um, I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, but this is how I think that we can, we can be better. Right. So I understand that initially you might, um, see the price as high. Um, but actually this is, this is how, um, um, you know, like the fact that SSPs are, you know, you don't have to pay for SSPs over a longer period of time. That's really what's going to save you money in the long term. So, um, really great job there. And, and to be honest, when you mentioned that the issues that you're having, um, in terms of, uh, feeling like your calls were a little bit of a, um, uh, you know, just, just a questionnaire, just asking loads and loads of questions. Um, I, my instant thought was, okay, she must be asking closed questions. Um, mm. So it's a surprise that you feel that way because your, your questions were so open-ended, um, you know, and conversational. Maybe the one, the one thing that I, I'd add is like at the start of the call, um, just taking a moment to ask, ask how people are is, is, is I, I think, and I always live and die by that sword. Um, and, but the way that you should do it is just saying like, um, how are you doing? And then I always follow it up with another question immediately. So like, how are you doing? How's your day going? That means okay. that makes it sound way more sincere. Um, mm. And you're building that human to human connection and that's going to allow them to open up later through the call. Um, but yeah, overall, really great job. Yeah. Right. Great job. Um, so uh, do you guys think I should introduce my name and then the company? Because I feel like that indicates that this is a sales phone call that sorry i'll jump personally, yeah go ahead it's 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 it's, it's yeah. so situational go ahead so so personally i think that it's difficult to get information from people when you don't give them any context at all mm-hmm. um i think it's not like you know if someone called me or when people call me and they just they're just immediately asking me tons of questions like you know i need some value from them um and whether that be just kind of like a you know um, so, so what we advise at Cognizant is, is, um, our team will, we won't explain anything about the product. We'll just say, look, we help sales and marketing teams and um, get in touch with their next best prospect, um, faster than anybody else. Right. We'll say something like something along those lines. We're not talking about the product. We're just giving a tiny bit of value to them, explaining yeah. why it's worth answering our questions that we're going to then follow up on. Um, so yeah, that, that's my personal like preference. Um, but I know that there's some schools of thought that are just, you know, let's get straight to the point. So I'm more than interested to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. So this is very situational because as we know, the way that you're, the way that you're going to introduce yourself with saying your name and your company might be different here where I'm in the States and, and like a France or Germany or like, you probably wouldn't be able to do that. So there are people who have introductions and they don't, they don't say their company name at all Mm -hmm. and they get away with it. Right. And there's some people who do the first name and last name and company and it still works for them. So I say it depends on your, there's three things, your style, the persona and the region style, persona and reason are going to be the determining factor on if you want to introduce your company and your name or not in the beginning, because there's intros that I've heard, I even coach and train on that don't have your first name, don't have your company name in the beginning. But then once they ask you, like, hey, what do you want? Then you say, hey, I'm so-and-so for this company. Here's the reason for the call. But you don't introduce your name and company in the beginning to have a pattern up. So people are like, wait, what are you talking about? And then you follow up with your name and company. Like I said, everyone's style is different. But I typically tell people, go with, the, go with your name, go with your company, because it's so situational across the board. And again, that's a good way to go about it. All right. Yep. Noted. Yep. Thank yep. you guys very much. No, thank you, Timmy. Really, really, thanks a lot for joining us um, today. Really brave.